Alright, in this video we're going to show that um, the rotor with the magnets that you would have in a pulse motor um, we'll probably dedicate this uh, little proof of concept to uh, John Bedini's SSG pulse motor, the simplest one there is I guess um, and that is basically what we have here the things that are different um, no neon across our um, base emitter junction, uh, collector emitter and you'll see no diode across the emitter base junction um, you also see that the trigger coil is not hooked up to anything now the reason for this is because we're pulsing the coil we're triggering the uh, transistor with our function generator at a frequency of 37 Hz now that is rather low but um, that's as uh, fast as I could get it so as I can uh, get the rotor to synchronize with the pulses um, but that's it's reasonably quick for a pulse motor so um, and the duty cycle um, of 30% on time is somewhere around what a half decent pulse motor would be so um, what that means is the coil is going to fire and then switch off like a normal pulse motor and um, we have our diode going back to our charge battery as we would a normal pulse motor the SSG pulse motor um, so it's basically the SSG setup but we're triggering the transistor with our function generator instead of the trigger coil um, now the trigger coil has a different effect on our transistor than the function generator does in that um, once the trigger coil starts to switch the trans on, transistor on um, and our run coil starts to fire up that triggers the transistor on harder because you get like a transformer effect through the trigger and back to your um, transistor so that is why the transistor switches on really hard the uh, magnet passing our trigger coil switches the transistor on slightly sending a current through the run coil the transformer action um, creates a cascade effect and switches the transistor on really hard and um, once the uh, peak current and voltage is reached across our run coil um, the magnet then it's leaving the rotor in my case because we have alternating fields four magnets uh, with the north field out and four magnets with the south field out um, that actually helps switch the transistor off nice and cleanly so as you don't get any oscillations at all or double switching during one pulse um, so we're running at our 37 hertz our coil is um, that is showing us our battery voltage which we're running off of this battery here and I'm keeping that topped up with my um, UV power supply there so as can maintain a stable voltage and um, what we're going to do in this test is we're going to take down some measurements um, with our rotor and magnets in and then we're going to stop the rotor and remove it and look at the uh, power calculations for power in and power out without our spinning magnets past the coil and of course that will be still uh, triggering at our 37 hertz we'll see function generator says it will so our magnets have nothing to do with the triggering of our transistor um, it only has to do with um, the efficiency at which this is run now if a magnet can't do any useful work it shouldn't increase the efficiency of our system but you're about to see the complete opposite right here and a fairly big difference so um, let's get on with it uh, there's our waveform there the blue channel, channel 2 is across our 10 watt 1 ohm CBR um, yes I know it's a wire around CBR but at 37 hertz we're not going to see any kind of inductive activity across that CVR which you can clearly see 
on our uh, scope. No little inductive spikes whatsoever across that blue trace. So um, that is going to measure our current into the system and in this case we're going to use the mean value because using an instantaneous value with a wave like that it's going to be fairly hard to calculate accurately so we'll use the mean value um, which will give us our average current you will see there it's 300 millivolts across one ohm so that means we are 300 milliamps and our 12.46 volts in that is what the total system is consuming as far as power is going uh, that includes the dissipated power from our transistor in the form of heat dissipated power from our CVR in the form of heat and of course the dissipated power of our coil in the form of heat and the magnetic field um, but some of that energy of course goes back to our charge battery this one here um, and we are also doing the calculations on what's coming back out as you can see it's not very efficient because we're running at a low speed we're not trimming up the transistor, we're simply looking at the effects of the magnets upon the pulse motor. Now some would say um, a solid state version is uh, much more efficient, but um, once we remove our flywheel, that's exactly what we will have. Alright, so um, we're going to write down some power measurements because I'm going to uh, have a look at these myself and see how much... Um, our spinning rotor increases the efficiency as far as this little pulse motor is going. Of course, once we remove the rotor, it will no longer be a pulse motor, just a solid state oscillator, um, which is doing the same thing. Alright, so um, our mean value across channel 2 is 300 millivolts, so that's 300 milliamps at our battery voltage, 12.46. So our PN in this case. And these are roundabout power measures, so they'll be fairly close. Um, is, what we say, a 300 milliamps at 12.46 volts. Okay, so now what we want to do is get um, our power out into the charge battery um, with our rotor, and then we'll also do our power out without our rotor magnets as well as our power in. Alright, so um, our power out, this meter here once again very good at reading average current and at this low frequency we can be very sure that that is extremely close to what it is. So we have 69 milliamps um, We'll go at 12.41, it's flicking up to 2. That's a fairly decent battery. I uh, got it from work and um, it's slowly coming back to life. So, um, 69 milliamps, 68, 69. hard when it's on the changeover. Of course as our voltage rises the current will drop. There we go 68 milliamps at 12.42 volts. Okay so um better write that down as well. So you can do all these power calculations yourselves as well. Oh, that uh, waveform you're seeing there is cross, across the um, emitter collector junction. And it's our yellow channel right there. Um, before the diode. Alright, so we're, we've remained stable at 300 millivolts. Oh, scope timed out. 
and our frequency of course is going to be stable because the function generator says it is and our duty cycle is going to be stable because the function generator says it is. Alright so what we're going to do now <coughs> once again what we're going to do now is stop our rotor like so remove it so it's a magnetic field it's doing absolutely nothing to the coil whatsoever um, I should have just left it there before I took it off so you can see that um, with the magnet sitting there it's the same not having the rotor there at all it makes no difference to the coil they must be spinning okay so <clears throat> now let's have a look at our power in now we have a mean value of 360 millivolts across our um, 1 ohm CBR there which means we now are drawing 360 milliamps and you can see that because the battery voltage is starting to drop by 0 0.01 millivolt So 12.45 volts and our 360 milliamps. So uh, 360 MA at 12.5, oh 12.45, not 12.5. That is now our power in without the rotor. Um, so we've gone up 60 milliamps, um, pretty close to the same voltage. Now let's have a look at our power out without the rotor. Okay, so now we have 52, 53 milliamps at 12.4 volts. So I could stay on 52 longer than 53 at 12.4. So that's 52 MA at 12.4 B. So that is now our power out. You can see here we've gone from 68 milliamps at 12.42 volts and we've dropped down to 52 milliamps at 12.4 volts. So a big drop in power out and a fairly decent gain um, in power in. So um, if that's not proof that those magnets have been quite useful um, in a pulse motor or a pulse system as far as um, this kind of flyback situation is concerned then I don't know what is but you've seen it right there we had a whopping difference on our output and a fairly large difference on your input so now we can go and calculate the difference um, of the two values and we can work out what percentage um, of efficiency that having the rotor with the magnets added to the system oh and there is the uh, waveform as you can see a big change across the uh, collector emitter and I was going to uh, screenshot that but I forgot to do that with the rotor on and it's right bastard to get spinning up and synchronised with the uh, pulses of the coil again so um, we'll just have to uh, screenshot the video but I can screenshot that one while it's running there so once again 360 milliamps 12.45 volts and our output whoop, turn on of output is 52 milliamps at 12.4 volts without the rotor all right uh, thanks for watching um, yeah I may have been um, <laughs> a little guilty of dismissing uh, the big Dini motor but uh, when you go back and you start having a closer look at it uh, there is definitely something in there with those rotating magnets well guys, have a good night and uh, cheers for now.